Extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Moderation in the pursuit of justice is no virtue. In 1964, the Republican Party ran Barry Goldwater as their presidential candidate, and they got shellacked. Uh, but in that general election race between Barry Goldwater and LBJ, it's interesting, there were no televised debates between them that year. Instead, the TV hallmark of that election was the advent of some of the most ambitious, conceptually aggressive political TV ads of all time. Uh, we, of course, saw a little girl counting daisy petals uh, as a nuclear explosion went off. Uh, we watched the eastern seaboard being sawed off and falling into the sea. But my favorite ad from that incredible election uh, was one that we have played previously on this show. And the response we got when we played this ad was deafening. It was overwhelming. Uh, and the ad doesn't have anything stunning going on visually. Um, it's, it's just a man talking to the camera, shot in one take, straightforward. It's about four minutes long, which is incredibly long for a political ad. But it is absolutely mesmerizing. And yes, it resonates a lot, not just about 1964, but about right now. And behold. I don't know just why they wanted to call this a confession. I, I certainly don't feel guilty about being a Republican. I've always been a Republican. My father is, his father was. The whole family is a Republican family. I voted for Dwight Eisenhower the first time I ever voted. I voted for Nixon the last time. But when we come to Senator Goldwater, now it seems to me we're up against a, a very different kind of a man. This man scares me. Now maybe I'm wrong. A friend of mine has said to me, listen, just because uh, a man sounds a little irresponsible during a campaign doesn't mean he's going to act irresponsibly. You know that theory that the White House makes the man. I don't buy that. You know what I think makes a president, I mean, aside from his, his judgment, his experience, are the men behind him, his, 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 uh, his advisors, the cabinet. And so many men with strange ideas are, are working for Goldwater. You'll hear a lot about what these guys are against. They seem to be against just about everything. But what are they for? But the hardest thing for me about this whole campaign is to sort out one Goldwater statement from another. A, a reporter will go to Senator Goldwater and he'll say, Senator, on such and such a day, you said, and I quote, blah, 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 whatever it is, end quote. And then Goldwater says, well, I wouldn't put it that way. I, I can't follow that. I, was he serious when he did put it that way? Is he serious when he says he wouldn't put it that way? I, I, I just don't get it. Uh, a president ought to mean what he says. President Johnson, now, Johnson at least is, is, is talking about facts. He says, look, we got the, the tax cut bill, and because of that you get to carry home X number of dollars more every payday. We got the nuclear test ban, and, and because of that, there's X percent less radioactivity in the food. But, but Goldwater, often you can't, I, I, I can't figure out just what Goldwater means by the things she says. I read now where he says, a, a wave, a craven fear of death is sweeping across America. What is that supposed to mean? If he means that people don't want to fight a nuclear war, he's right. I don't. When I read some of these things that Goldwater says about uh, total victory, I get a little worried, you know? I, I wish... I wish I was as sure that Goldwater is against war as I am that he's against some of these other things. I wish I could believe that he has the imagination to, to be able to just shut his eyes and picture what this country would look like after a nuclear war. Sometimes I, I wish I'd been at that convention in San Francisco. I mean, I wish I'd been a delegate. I really do, because I, I would have fought, you know? And I wouldn't have worried so much about party unity, because if you unite behind a man you don't believe in, it's a lie. I tell you, those people who got control of that convention, who are they? I mean, when the head of the Ku Klux Klan, when all these weird groups come out in favor of the candidate of my party, 
Either they're not Republicans or I'm not. I've thought about just not voting in this election, just staying home, but you can't do that because that's that's saying you, you don't care who wins, and, and I do care. I think my party made a bad mistake in San Francisco, and I'm going to have to vote against that mistake on the 3rd of November. Vote for President Johnson on November 3rd. The stakes are too high for you to stay home. One of the most compelling political ads of all time.